Welcome back to the show. Today I want to share some thoughts with you on a theme called broken down, just broken down. And you're going to see around me here today that uh, where I am is a great example of broken down. You look all around me and this is obviously a broken down place, right? So that's kind of like the big picture I want to share. There's a guy named J.M. Boyce. He, he writes, there's a story involving Yogi Berra, the well-known catcher for the New York Yankees, and Hank Aaron, who at the time was the chief power hitter for the Milwaukee Braves. The teams were playing in the World Series, and as usual, Yogi was keeping up with his ceaseless chatter. He talked a lot. Intended to pep up his teammates, and on one hand, to distract the Milwaukee batters in the other. As Aaron came to the plate, Yogi tried to distract him by saying, Henry, you're holding the bat wrong. You're supposed to hold it so you can read the trademark. Aaron didn't say anything, but when the next pitch came, he hit it into the left field bleachers. After rounding the bases and tagging up at home plate, Aaron looked at Yogi Bear and said, I didn't come here to read. If you think about it, there's a lot of people around you, maybe not a lot, maybe a few people around you that are trying to distract you from doing what you need to do in your own life which then creates an environment around you that is broken down, that is uh, beyond repair, at least for the moment, and that it distracts you from the momentum that you need in your own life to continue to do the hard stuff to get you moving in a direction that you need to go. And C.S. Lewis wrote, if we let ourselves, we shall always be waiting for some distraction or other to end before we can really get down to our work. The only people who achieve much are those who want knowledge so badly that they seek it, listen, that they seek it while the conditions are unfavorable. Favorable conditions never come. Favorable conditions never come. I think more times than not, people who achieve some level of status in whatever business or entity they're in, they continually move forward, they evolve, they get better, even though around them is not picture perfect. And I think if you look at your own life and you look at maybe more so that the lives of people who've been truly successful, you look at people who, can, who realize that they can achieve certain things in a very extraordinary way that they haven't been able to achieve before. So in the Bible, there's a, a guy named Paul, and Paul wrote a book actually wrote several books, and one of the books he wrote is a book called Evisions, and he talks about that when you and I go through life, I'm paraphrasing what Paul said, is that we go through life and we have to realize that the battle really starts with the mind. The battle, whatever you're trying to accomplish, whatever goals you're trying to accomplish, it all starts with how you think, and thinking correctly will determine, believe it or not, what the end result is of whatever you're trying to, to accomplish in life. There's a story of a guy named Nehemiah, and he lived, oh, three or 4,000 years ago. And Nehemiah uh, was challenged to um, undertake a project that was at least maybe in his own mind a little too much for him to uh, take on. So he decided to recruit a team around him that enabled him to rebuild some things that had been torn down over a period of, of years. And I think that you and I have to understand that sometimes that our lives are going to be broken down, not necessarily because of other people, but because of apathy. Sometimes fear gets in the way. Sometimes intimidation gets in the way. Sometimes maybe you look at projects in your own life and you think that, you know, John, I, I can't do this or I can't do that. Or, or maybe that I don't have the skill sets, that at least you think you don't have the skill sets, to achieve certain things in your life. When in reality, you do have the skill sets that you need to achieve certain things in life, but you need to develop those skill sets. I can remember when I started to learn to ride a bicycle. I fell down quite a few times. I mean, I, I fell down a lot. But as you know, when you start to ride a bicycle, it gets easier and easier and easier if you surround yourself with people that will help you learn how to ride a bicycle. Oftentimes, I, I try to remind people that if you really want to get better in life, and if you really want to rebuild the areas in your life that have been torn down for a variety of reasons, then you have to constantly feed your, 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 your mind. I can remember when we 
ad adopted our first two kids, our oldest child at the time would hoard food in her room because she wasn't sure if she would get enough food at the next day or if there was going to be enough food at the next meal. So she assumed because she didn't have food where she came from that she felt like she had to hide it or hoard it in order to make sure that she had food for the future. So if you decide to surround yourself with people that will feed you and more importantly, that you create an environment in your own life where you feed yourself, then you're going to be able to rebuild some things in your life that over a time, over a period of time, it has really fallen apart. And if you just go through down a list in your own life, how you've gone through certain situations in your life and you've maybe given up on certain relationships or certain skill sets. And those skill sets have been, have devolved. They've been destroyed over a period of time. And then you realize that if you would invest back into those things again, they could in fact be rebuilt. So when you lay down the habits that you need to develop over a period of time, apathy is going to sit, sit, sit in. I'm, I'm fanatical about going to the gym four or five days a week because I know me. I know that if I do not go to the gym, say for two days in a row, it's going to be, for me, in my own mind, much more difficult to get back on the saddle again to get back into the gym every day or almost every day after that. So maintaining momentum will eliminate the possibility of stuff really falling apart. And I have to say it this way. There's times when some things come into your life that will uh, destroy what you're trying to build. It could be relationships. It could be decisions that you've made over a period of time that were stupid decisions, that were decisions that, man, I wish I would have thought that through. If I would have thought that through, then certain things would not have happened, and then relationships would not have been destroyed, or my surroundings would not have been destroyed, or certain things would have not have happened if I would have thought things through more, more, more carefully. So what I'm asking you to do is to think about the people in your life that can help you rebuild what has been destroyed in your own life. Let me go back to what I shared earlier about a guy named Nehemiah. Nehemiah's task was to rebuild a city. That was his, his job. He, was, he felt called to do this. He felt chosen to do this particular task, to rebuild this city. But there were a couple, a few people around him that were trying to distract him from rebuilding this city. They would, in fact, they would intimidate him. They would threaten him. In fact, they would try to get him to walk away from the project of rebuilding this city to have a conversation a half an hour, an hour away from where he was. But it wasn't really about a conversation. It was really about stopping the project that he was working on at the time. And I have to think about your life and my life, that there are people that don't know the level of urgency that you may have internally to rebuild certain things in your own life. And there are people that, frankly, have no agenda. They have no, they have, they're, they're not doing anything. Let me give you another example. I had somebody who, uh, less than a week ago or so, I was working. They called me up on the phone. They did a FaceTime chat. And they just wanted to talk. They just w literally wanted to, to chat for 15 minutes, half hour, hour. So I was trying to be very patient because I knew, knew this person needed to vent and needed to, uh, needed to talk some things out. But it really reaffirmed to me that the majority of people out there, maybe in your own life, have no plan. They have no agenda. They have no mission. They have no schedule. So they assume that everybody around them has no schedule. Their lives are broken down. They have no interest in rebuilding anything while you're trying to rebuild what you're trying to do in your life. So again, if you and I choose to allow those people to distract you from doing what you're doing or trying to do to rebuild what you're trying to rebuild, then it's going to take a lot longer to put back together what's been destroyed or what's been torn down just from time. You know, I think oftentimes when we've, we've planted gardens or uh, or, or, or fruits or ve vegetables or something in the garden. And the weeds grow up so easily, and it takes a, a, a decent amount of effort to keep the weeds out of the garden when you're trying to grow corn or tomatoes or whatever you're trying to grow. I think that's a metaphor for life, too. The weeds grow a whole lot faster than the fruit or the vegetables. It takes a tremendous amount of effort for you and I to 
maintain our mental garden, so, so to speak, if you really want to uh, rebuild some things in your own life. Michael Hyatt, he is a, he's a great author, and he shares some, some ideas about how you can rebuild some things in your own life. He, he talks about, he says, screen for excuses. Again, screen for excuses. He says, be honest with yourself. It's easy to slip in an excuse disguised as an immovable barrier. Again, Michael Hyatt's words. He says, it's easy to slip in an excuse disguised as an immovable barrier. He says, until it's proven otherwise. Sometimes you have to tell yourself, like in the, in the film, The Matrix, there is no wall, there is no wall. I think you have experienced in your own life that you've come to a situation in your life where you think that it's impenetrable, that you can't get through it or you can't overcome it or you can't embrace a new uh, venture in your life because you don't think that you have the goods or the intelligence or the level of anything that you need to do it when in fact you have everything you need to do it. Uh, Michael Hyatt writes, he says, you need to question those walls. He says, you, sh you could try talking to them, I suppose, but that could lead to other problems, he says. He says, think about the barriers themselves and are they walls that you've created yourself or, listen, or allowed to be created in your silence? Are you missing the skill sets to get over the walls and where can you get a reliable third party perspective on the barriers you face? Don't rule this out. The walls may be telling you it's time to grow elsewhere. Sometimes, um, maybe question saying this, but sometimes there are some walls and some relationships that don't need to be rebuilt. Think about that a minute. I have a tendency to uh, look at people and question their whys, question why they do what they do, not what they do per se, but why they do what they do. And there's a segment of the population that are, I'm trying to be polite, that have serious mental problems that do things because they're messed up in the head. And that's not gonna change. That their lives will not change. That's just how they're messed up. So do I wanna choose to try to rebuild something or rebuild somebody who has no interest in being rebuilt? Think about that a minute. How many people in your life have you attempted to rebuild or to invest in when they have no interest in getting better themselves? Think about that for a minute. How many people have you tried to invest in your own life who have no interest in getting better themselves? You need to look in the mirror really long and hard and say, is this person worth my time? Is this person worth my investment? That's a question I have to ask myself every day. Michael Hyatt goes on to say, he says, you need to get creative. He says, as Thomas Edison famously said, there's always another way. If you find a real barrier doesn't exist, or does exist, excuse me, start by figuring out your goal. Let your imagination work backwards to see if other solutions present themselves. This is something that I've learned through some really smart people, is that you need to create yourself from, from back, excuse me, from front to back. That is to see where you want to be in life and then start working backwards to see what you need to do to make that happen. As an example, when we built our house, we had a, a person draw up a blueprint and my, you know, we looked at it. My wife made some adjustments, moved some walls here, took out this there, added that there. As a result of which, the blueprint was a model for the builders to build the home that we built for our kids. But without a blueprint, that there's, you really can't really do something that's going to stand for any length of time. So if you and I don't have a blueprint in our lives to, to reference to, to have goals that are in writing, I've talked about this a lot on the shows, to have written goals, it's your blueprint in life that keeps you moving forward through some of those dark and difficult times because without the blueprint, you know, you're, you're going to get distracted. Stuff's going to break down. Stuff's going to fall apart. Stuff isn't going to work in your life. The blueprint keeps you focused on what you need to do. Michael Hyatt says, take baby steps. If you find you can move forward where you are, don't hesitate to start small. He says, motion leads to momentum. Again, motion leads to momentum. Maybe you can't do it all right away, 
but you can do something. Sit down, jot down a plan, take steps, even small ones, do it today. This is how, honestly, I've been able to write several books and, and do a, a new newspaper publishing and, and my blog that goes out around the world every week. It doesn't happen in a day. It happens because I've given myself a deadline and here's what I had to do mentally. I had to tell people I was going to do something before I did it. Mm, does that make any sense? Let me, let me give you a broader view of that. I've been really afraid of, for decades of speaking in front of people and definitely in front of a camera. So I decided one day, I said, if I'm going to overcome this fear, if I'm going to get out of my box, out of my comfort zone, out of, out of what's comfortable for me, then I've got to take myself by the back of my collar and push me out of my comfort zone. And for me, how I did it was I told people I was going to do it before I did it. So either I was going to be a liar, then I'm, I'm just a bunch of hot air and talking a bunch of smack, or I was going to do it and push myself past my fear and my terror. And that tool has tended to work for very successful people. They've said that they're going to do certain things, even though it's scary at the moment, sometimes it's terrifying, but they've publicized it and then they did it. That's how I did with the books I've written. I said, I'm going to write a book. I'm going to write a book, so this and that. So sometimes you just need to put it out there, and then now either you live up to what you said you were going to do, and then people are going to view you as a liar and a bunch of hot air, and then they're going to start ignoring you. That's a tool that's worked for, for me. Michael Hyatt writes, you need to keep moving forward. These three words from one of my favorite people, Walt Disney, summed it up. William Murray added this wisdom that I found to be true again and again, Michael Hyatt writes. The moment one definitely commits oneself, all sorts of things occur to help one that would never have occurred otherwise. Think about that a minute. When you start taking these big steps, when you start taking even the, the smallest baby step, Things tend to happen that could happen in your favor as a result of you then starting to get into new relationships, new conversations, new steps, new ventures in your own life that maybe you didn't think were even possible. Jennifer Jones shares, it's interesting what comes to you when you think you can't go on. He said, she, she said that she, she used to work with certain people that didn't think that they could overcome certain hurdles and then she painted a picture for those folks of what life would look like for them if they did overcome certain things. When I was nine years old, our school uh, at that time sent us all to learn how to swim. Now, certainly there were some kids in the class, there were several of the kids in the class that knew how to swim. I was one that did not know how to swim. So I was terrified. I was, I was fr frankly afraid of drowning. So without going into the whole detail of all what happened, is that there came a time where somebody had to force me to the end of the diving board while having styrofoam belt on whereby I couldn't drown. I bounced back to the top. I was literally crying, nine-year-old boy, crying my eyes out in front of, I don't know, I'll say 30 other students because I was terrified of drowning. I couldn't possibly drown because I had the belt on, right? So they forced me. I was in back of a girl named Regina. I remember Regina was a great swimmer, and I was very intimidated, very scared by Regina. She was you know, laughing and cutting up and having a great old time. I stood there, and, and, and the folks behind me were like, jump, jump, jump. I was like, I didn't want to jump. I wanted to go back to the end of the line like I had done two or three times prior to that. Eventually, I jumped in. Fast forward a couple few years later. Somebody taught me how to swim, and now water is not fearful at all. What I'm saying is sometimes you almost need to be shoved into the deep water, if you will, in order to do something that is extraordinary, and then you will then fall in love with it. But if you would have not allowed people to put you in an environment that would challenge your fears and your intimidations, then you wouldn't have, would not have had the opportunity to embrace some of the things that now, at least in my life, that I've really enjoyed doing. It's really, really hard to keep going when you don't have the people in your life that challenge you to do what's terrifying. Think about that a minute. You and I are surrounded by people who believe that what is always will be. That is, where they are emotionally, where they are physically, where they are financially is always where it's going to be forever. The people that challenge me every single day 
whether it's writing or you know, in their books or their articles, are people that have gone through some really tough times in their lives. They've learned some tools from those tough times and then enabled those relationships and what they've learned from those difficult times to frankly teach me that I haven't even, even gone through half of what they've gone through, but I've learned something from their failures, from their mistakes, from their failings, then I've built uh, uh, opportunities in my own life that have enabled me to do things that I couldn't have done before. Billy Graham uh, once wrote, he says, when I was seven years old, my father bought me my first bicycle. I had never ridden one. Patiently, my family and friends tried to teach me the art of cycling. I soon found out that there was one thing I must do if I was going to stay on the bicycle, I, I needed to keep moving forward. If I ceased to go forward, I would fall and hurt myself. So it is with life. We can never live this life on the highest plane unless we're continually growing and moving forward. That's how you ride a bike, right? I mean, you can only literally ride the bike if you pedal and move forward. And I know it's tough. I cannot tell you that it's easy. In fact, I can guarantee you it is not easy. But to keep pedaling, even, though, even if it's a little bit of pedaling every day. That's, in fact, there was a time in the last year that I only gave myself an hour to pedal for the next hour. If I can pedal for the next hour emotionally and mentally, I felt like, okay, I'll give myself an hour. And then the next hour came and I had to give myself another hour. Sometimes that's where you need to get. You have to get to a place where even no matter who you are or where you come from, Give yourself just an hour. If you can pedal an hour and move forward by the hour, then you're going to look back in a month and realize that, you know what, I've, I've gone and I've gone a month now. So I, I'm still here. I'm still pedaling. And that's, frankly, what has gotten a lot of people that have been successful through some of their darkest, darkest times is they kept pedaling in the middle of the pain. They kept pedaling in the middle of the agony. A guy named Jeffrey uh, taught me years ago. He says, he, he, in fact, he told a story. He says, Trevor, when you packed my things, where did you put my weights? He was talking about uh, this guy that he was friends with, Nelson Mandela. He said again, Trevor, when you packed my things, where did you put my weights? These were the words which Nelson Mandela asked this friend Trevor a day after he had been released from prison. After 27 years, your weights, Trevor asked, your weights? Yes, my weights. I gym every morning. I need my weights. Mandela responded matter-of-factly. This was in a telephone call at 5 o'clock in the morning. It sounds rather surprising for someone who had spent 27 years in jail to worry about weights just a day after tasting freedom. However, this was the hallmark of Nelson Mandela, and that hallmark is consistency. I would suggest to you, like I said, with, with a story about the, bike, the, the, the bicycle, that if you and I are consistent in our pedaling, not in a negative way, but literally in a pedaling like on a bicycle, that you're going to get where you need to get to a whole lot faster than when you stop and start. When you stop and start all the time, it's going to take a long time. Consistency is really the ability to, to, to maintain a particular standard. It, it, it produces results, whereas stagnancy does not. Being stagnant, no. Nah. I mean, have you ever gone to some, some water that doesn't move like a, like a swamp? Over a period of time, it really starts to smell. Moving water is better. Consistency, pedaling is better. E. Stanley Jones wrote, some people go through life getting results and others get consequences. In other words, he says, if you're not focused, your energy then is dissipated, and then, you're, and then situations happen by default. Think about this in your own life. How many times haven't you allowed even the smallest little hiccup emotionally? I'm not talking major, major events that destroy everything around you, but little things that seem to, to kind of get you off base just a little bit Mentally, they trip you up, and then you realize that you've allowed these little hiccups over a period of days, weeks, months, and years now 
that you're so far away from where you think you should be right now because you've allowed the hiccups and, by the way, the opinions, the negative opinions of other people to tear down what you've been trying to build for such a long time. And then you've given up on rebuilding certain things because of the opinions of other people. You know, I said it on other shows, but there, are been, there have been people, and there have been quite a few people in my life over the last several years who have been so negative and who've tried to get in and who have gotten into my head, frankly, by their negativity and their jealousy and their assumptions and their judgments about certain things that have clouded my, uh, my momentum, my pedaling forward. And I wonder if you have the same challenge. I wonder if you have people in your circle that are planting these little poison ivy seeds, these little seeds of, of, of d d discouragement, these little seeds of, of trying to create in you a mindset to get you to believe that you're not capable of doing the things that you can do. What I'm asking you today is, even though you live in an environment right now that's broken down, I'm asking you to rethink where you are right now emotionally and understand that you can rebuild what's going on around you. Because if you can think it, if you can imagine it and surround yourself with people who have the same agenda of like mind, you can achieve more than you ever thought possible. My name is John Carver. I thank you for watching the show and we'll be back real soon. Thanks so much.